Hello. The global nature of accountancy and the central role accountants working in and for organizations means that the profession is in a unique position to drive change and help build a better world. Here to discuss this idea is Jehan Perinkanayagam, who is the CEO of Informate, Chaminda Kumarasiri from HCL, and Suren Rajakarya, who is a partner at KPMG. Suren, I'll start with you. Uh, Sri Lanka is in a political and economic crisis, right? In this context, what do you think the role of the accounting profession is? What, what role can they play here? So before we get on to the role of accounting profession in Sri Lanka, let me just say at a, a global level, mm -hmm. like accountancy is basically the language of business mm -hmm. and it's, it's considered the connector of the global economy. And also professional accountants are needed during an economic crisis more right. rather than at a normal time. Not mm -hmm. that they are not required, but they would be required more. Mm. So one of the reasons for the crisis, if you look at it, mm. uh, whether it is in Sri Lanka or anywhere else, would be that, um, you know, there was a lack of uh, strategic planning or uh, initiatives sure. taken in terms of infrastructure, logistics, or the profession, I mean, the regulators not having the right um, aspects to address in terms of what is required for the government policy makers, things like that. So. Uh, financial literacy uh, and the improvement of financial skills mm. obviously underpin a sustainable development mm. of any country. Mm. So that's that's the basis. Mm. So uh, the issue for Sri Lanka would be the professional. Uh, I mean, if if we look at on a global basis, account accountancy profession is linked to national economic growth, mm. and this is proven by some research done by the IFAC as well. Uh, for for even for uh, improved living standards, right. the, the, the higher number of accountants result in higher living standards for mm. countries. And in another research, it was proven that higher GDP also it results in higher GDP. So, in that context, what Sri Lanka could do is use the accounting profession, um, who are obviously located in many corporates or in the government sector, to come up with a sustainable solution for all the issues as to what the issues are everybody knows it so i'm not going to outline the number of issues which are there mm -hmm. but uh, if a discussion or a negotiation or a consultation is carried out the accounting mm -hmm. profession would be in a better position to address most of the issues on a uh, on a risk management aspect and on a sustainable basis sure jehan can i bring you in on the same question you know how do you think the Accountants can play a role in the sort of uncertain economic and political climate that Sri Lanka is in right now. Absolutely. So some of the priorities mm. for a business during a crisis are the cash flow planning, mm. managing risks, mm. as Suren said, and also predictive analysis mm. of forecasting what the different scenarios are mm. uh, and what the solutions are and what each of these translates to. Mm in USD or in LKR. So accountants are uniquely positioned and trained sure. on cash flow planning, on risk management and well equipped therefore mm. to support the CEO, to mm. support the board in mm. the decision making and going through mm. this crisis and coming out emerging on the other side unscathed. Sure. Can I bring you in also Chaminda on, yeah. the, on the same uh, question? What is the role the profession can play in a very uncertain economic and political climate like we are in right now? Now, adding to what both of them said, we need to understand that there is no room for any error now. When you mm. are in a crisis, when you are in a tight situation, the margin available for you to try and test things are mm. very less. Mm. So therefore, at this point in time, you need a lot of data-driven decision making. Mm. You can't work on gut feeling. Mm. And the accounting can provide that basis, sure. proper data, information so you make decision based on that that mm. is number one so accountants are the best at this sure secondly we also need some kind of competencies to forecast or look at the future in an uncertain situation for example we talk about the exchange rates mm. right everyone wants to know what's going to happen to the exchange rate mm. how you deal with it mm. so how you play your game during an uncertain situation and then how you prepare yourself with backup arrangements, alternatives. We need to 
think of alternative futures. Mm. So accountants are not just number crunchers. Mm. They are also very much conversant sure. in risk management and forecasting future mm. scientifically. Mm. and that is what is required at this stage for decision making and you have to handhold and sometimes be the co-pilot with your ceo or whoever the person running the show bring in that factual informative and predictive element uh, jehan i'll come to you you know uh, look at the overall sustainability agenda that you know that potentially uh, cannot take a back seat hopefully uh, even if there is a crisis how do you reconcile the two how do you find space for sustainability in a um, uh, climate like the one sri lanka is in right now no absolutely i think the natural tendency of a lot of businesses and ceos is to gravitate to just focusing on the immediate mm-hmm. and looking at survival mm-hmm. uh, but the important fact that people now realize businesses mm-hmm. governments and people is that without sustainability mm-hmm. if we don't have a planet uh, mm-hmm. to live in uh, the value of business is meaningless and i was listening to an expert on this and he was saying uh, if the temperature crosses uh, red line Uh, about 30% of the global economy could get wiped out mm. right so it's a significant existential crisis that mm. we are facing so uh, accountants are trained to look mm. at the long term to be strategic mm. and the fact is that being sustainable is actually good for business even in the short term because mm. it actually helps manage some of your costs yes mm. there are investments but there are very very uh, impressive returns mm. on those investments it helps to manage costs it helps to uh, retain your people it gives an organization purpose it endears you to investors mm. Uh, your customers insist on it mm. so from every aspect it is good for business mm. including in the short term uh, and acci i am very proud to say has championed this they have had the acci sustainability awards in sri lanka for many years they've been built sustainability and esg into the syllabus mm. uh, and we are equipping uh, our professionals mm. uh, to be able to uh, advise the business advise the ceos and the boards mm. on sustainability mm. uh, chamindra let me uh, turn to you now you know um how can accountants help organizations they represent establish trust and navigate the unfolding challenges we are talking about the crisis in sri lanka still uh, you know both the immediate economic crisis and the long term societal sustainability sorts of angles uh, yeah. uh, that are b- bound to you know emerge i think there shamindra one thing we need to understand when you want to build any organization or trust uh one of the things that we look at is transparency transparency and accountability are some of the key areas that we look at in this case so how accountants can bring in because when you bring in objective information to the table mm. keeping your biases away mm. that gives some kind of a objective view and mm. uh, that will help even the audience to look at things without any glasses because what happens especially in the public sector we are talking about we don't see that transparency coming into the picture people right. sometimes are kept in the dark they mm. don't know what's going on even in the current situation mm. we see most of the information most of the realities now people realize if we knew some of these things much earlier mm. they would have certain things at least people could have done no you know attended to mm. now sometimes when you don't have that transparency and more importantly the accountability because mm. the decision makers need to take responsibility and accountability for what they too mm. and now we sometimes see the ball passing games mm. but accountants being professionals they are trained and they know how to put that the when you put your signature on a paper they take that responsibility mm. and that instill the trust and confidence in that person and that helps to first build confidence in the person and then thereby giving it to the organization as well Uh, Suren, you want to add anything on that? On uh, how potentially accountants can play a role here uh, in contributing to build, building a culture of, uh, you know, trust and uh, uh, within the within the system generally. If you start at a, a lower level, mm. what what 
ACC does is trying to train their students mm. in um, ethical behavior, in building trust, in uh, public um, uh, interest uh, being, you know, uh, utmost in their activities, stuff like that. So that is because they have identified, or as as a profession, we've identified that's fundamentally important for accountants. Mm. So once a student is trained, then they become professionals. The professional accountant. should play that role that's mm. that's the that's the aim of uh, any professional body mm. so i think accountants are probably the best uh, in that aspect of trying to build trust um, in sure. the organization can i turn to you jehan you know and and lead uh, picking up from where the discussion with suren was right now you know can you share some insights about how the profession and acca in particular are contributing to building a culture of enterprise and innovation we just talked about trust you know uh, enterprise and innovation may play have to play a role in uh, in an economy emerging out of uh, challenges it has even if you look at the seven quotients of the future accountant mm-hmm. that acca has uh, researched and uh-huh. put out okay. you will find creativity right and you will also find digital skills right as one of those quotients sure So the modern accountant, the future mm. accountant, is well equipped with mm. what is happening in terms of innovation, in terms of robotic process automation, AI, machine learning. I was privileged to meet uh, a fantastic ACCA. He is a member of the Global Council, uh, based out of Australia, and he advises businesses in finance transformation. So he looks at the use of the ERP systems, how innovation can be built in, how it can add value to the business, how the entire finance function could be transformed to world class standards, and that is a crying need in the economy. It will add so much to the economy, to the public sector. I mean, if you just look at Sri Lanka, I mean, we have brilliant people. Uh, I think uh, b- building in innovation into our public sector as well as the private sector can really free up our people mm. to be able to add much more value, mm. free them up from the mundane, mm. uh, and I think it has transformational mm. uh, power. Right, Suren. So, let me turn to you. In a in a in a global perspective, what kind of role does ACCA play to facilitate connections and support? governments you know businesses policy makers right uh, you know to shape better futures to shape better communities you know what what role does acca play and what can it do i think as a as a body acca uh, would not directly get involved in such activities but i'll go back to starting from you know the type of accountants created sure. by acca as a profession sure. so uh, some of the focus areas at in addition to the technical skills is like good governance mm. um ethical behavior mm. uh, looking after the public interest mm. um and the other skills which uh, jehan just highlighted in terms of whether it's creativity digital mm. thing you know um aspects so th- those kinds of training is provided for the professional to try and contribute to their organizations mm. by contributing to their organizations they contribute towards their communities and the, when the communities grow mm. that's how a country grows mm. so for for that we need to go back to the original question which you asked that's that's the reason when you have higher number of accounting professionals in a country that goes on to contribute to higher living standards and higher gdp mm. the direct link is because we are trained and uh, knowledgeable and uh, you know um made available all these uh, thought leadership and resources we can use that to contribute towards the development of corporates mm. so development of corporates leads to development of those communities and the government sure. rather than uh, doing it in a like a direct way how can your industry your profession and i'm referring to banking here in particular help uh, navigate sri lanka uh, through the current, current challenges It's a kind of a tricky situation because you know in a in a in a country uh, the banking system or the financial system is somewhat the backbone of the economy. So mm. because you are the intermediary, if you do not play your role, mm. it can go either way. Mm. Because what we don't expect or don't want is mm. a collapse in the banking system. So that can have a cascading effect to everything. Mm. So therefore, I think uh, this industry we have to manage very carefully. Even I think even the regulator. must look at it in that sense because mm. we have seen in the past sometimes uh, operational involvement at the regulator level as well when running banks because each bank has its own business model mm. 
and there is a regulatory role that they need to play mm-hmm. so the banks have to identify especially if you look at what are the critical areas that their intervention is required mm-hmm. remember during a pandemic period uh, the banks were compelled to look after the uh, small time players sure. you know st- small timers the outskirts mm. the semis mm. now yes we have to take care of them as well but at this time we have a bigger problem mm. at the national economic level because first mm. we need to get the economy running mm. so what can the bank do in the running of the economy at least to stop the bleeding mm. so therefore in this case i would say banking can do a lot in terms of one side facilitating the finances unfortunately the current rate structure we have interest rate structure is not conducive for lending it's more towards building liquidity because mm-hmm. that was also a problem that we had in the banking sure. system the banking system lacked liquidity so we increased the rates people put their money in but in the current context i don't think even people have excess cash to put in the banking system and earn something because they have to manage their essentials mm-hmm. so i think uh, if the regulator and the policy makers support the banking system to do their job especially in facilitating economic activity mm. because at this time what we need is building the production capacity of the country because mm. we have import restrictions we have issues uh, with essentials mm. because we we have a shortage mm. so i think the banking can also play a role in building that capacity and create that uh, production economy for that there has to be some kind of facilitation sure jehan you come from a fairly different industry um, knowledge processing process outsourcing or you you handle back office uh, yes. operations yes. Uh, both for sri lankan clients and yes. for clients overseas yes. right uh, you know how, how do you see uh, your industry as a as a potential solution to or helping navigate sri lanka into a potential solution to the uh, the crisis it is no, absolutely so the it bpo industry uh, is one of the top 5 export earners and brings in vital foreign currency into mm-hmm. sri lanka so it is one of the few industries during the pandemic that actually grew had double digit growth sure. so the plan for the industry is to be 5 billion dollars in export revenue earnings by 2025 currently it's about uh, just under 2 billion dollars currently we employ 115000 people and the goal is by 2025 uh, to employ 200000 people so in terms of providing employment in terms of value addition within the country in terms of export revenue earnings and also inclusive growth today we have delivery centers all across the island uh, if you look at the bpm industry 48% of the workforce is female we employ differently able people my organization we very proud to launch the country's first rural bpm so it has tremendous potential to create inclusive growth across the country women's employment uh, being uh, able to bring in important foreign exchange so from every angle it's a key contributor mm-hmm.